2023 has been an eventful year in the Canadian market. Interest rate turmoil, inflation and wars abroad have shaken global supply chains. And while 2023 had many highs and lows, both literally and figuratively in the financial industry, there are some top stories that stand out. The rise and rapid fall of major cryptocurrency exchanges, labor unrest at major Canadian companies, and Canada's continued housing crisis. Joining us now to reflect on investing in 2023 is Brendan Caldwell, Director at Caldwell Securities Limited. Brendan, thank you very much for joining us. That's the year that was. Thank you, Julie. Love to be here. So let's take this moment to go through a year in review. What stood out the most to you regarding investing in 2023? Well, a few things. I mean, when one thinks of 2023, one thinks of all the uh, difficult uh, political situations, particularly the, uh, the, the war in Israel and uh, Gaza, the ongoing war in Russia and Ukraine. The strange, if somewhat cynical thing, though, is that wars and political issues, defining political very broadly, seem to have little um, or very transitory effect on markets. Interest rates are and continue to be the determining factor. We saw a year that kicked off with uh, all of the tech stocks that had been beaten up so badly in 2022 because of rising interest rates. Uh, rise above those rates, and despite the fact that you would have thought there would be multiple compression, uh, that is to say the exorbitant multiples paid on some of these tech stocks on their earnings or on their sales, uh, would cause them to be depressed in a rising interest rate environment, they seem to have overcome that. So I think those would be a couple of things. We can talk about interest rates in more depth, but that was and continues to be the determining factor that is interest rates. So like we mentioned, and you mentioned, there was a lot of negativity in 2023. What surprised you the most with the way that the markets behaved? Well, again, I don't know if it's so much as a surprise or much the same in that shocking, awful, terrible political events. And I use that again, that term very broadly, I would consider even 9-11 a political event. While the market cratered in 9-11, it closed 2001 higher than where it had been on September the 10th. Um, so we're having something similar with that uh, terrible attack on Israel. Uh, now the market is you know, just sort of taking that in stride. Um, uh, nor has it seen a particular upward spike in energy prices, which one would have thought that whenever there is a tension in the Middle East, uh, tension would be to say the least, when there's outright war in the Middle East, usually that has a... Uh, uh, an effect of, of driving uh, oil prices, energy prices higher, but we haven't seen a lot of that. So what disappointed you the most within the financial industry? Uh, maybe it just, <laughs> that's a funny question. That uh, it's, it, Can I be disappointed with my industry? It's <laughs> perhaps how cynical we are in that these, these, global, these global issues do not have a bigger effect on the investing by, by me and my contemporaries, my, my, my colleagues in the industry around the world. So I guess that would be a bit, uh, if not shocking or disappointing, it's just worth noting. Um, I think the important thing for real people, though, in terms of investing is don't let the, the news of the day, oh, there's so much uncertainty, I don't want to do anything. It's in the times of uncertainty, and there has never been a time more uncertain than the present. But it's in these times of uncertainty, particularly when things seem to be going badly, that you you often have the best opportunities going into the future. So I have to ask, any words of wisdom to investors for these last few trading days of 2023? I think the things that have done the worst this year will do the best next year, or at least early on next year. So you've seen uh, interest rate sensitive stocks, particularly banks, um, do very badly in 2023. I think you'll see them be a lot stronger next year. If you haven't started investing, start today, because if you wait, it just makes it that much harder because it'll be good news or bad news. And if it's good news, you'll wait till it pulls back. And if it's bad news, you, you won't, you'll be still too frightened to do anything. So start with something, even a little something just today. Always so much 
information. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Julie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.